Welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us at the Danica Patrick Google Plus Hangout today. Hi, I'm Holly Kane. I'm a reporter for NASCAR.com and I have two drivers with me here today at two very different stages in their careers. And they're ready to talk about their 2014 season and also how they've climbed up through the ranks to become professional stock car drivers and more. Our uh, first special guest here today is Danica Patrick, driver of the number 10 and a coach and judge for the Peak Stock Car Dream Challenge. And we are also joined by an up-and-coming KNN Pro Series driver, Patrick Starpoli. Um, any of you that might have questions, we're going to take those later on in the chat, and we just ask you to write them at hashtag Peak Ask Danica, and you can do it right here on the Hangout if you are there, or you can submit them through Facebook or um, Twitter. So let's get right away to Danica Patrick. Yes, ma'am. Danica is the driver of the number 10 in the Sprint Cup Series, as we mentioned. And Patrick, we're going to get to you secondly. Um, our first question I think we'll start out with is, Danica, you certainly made your way up through the ranks of the sport and even made history along the way several times um, by becoming the first female NASCAR driver to uh, win the pole for the Daytona 500. Can you tell us about how you got your start in the sport and really what inspired you to, to become a driver? Well, I started racing go-karts when I was 10 years old, and um, I mean, honestly, it just went from there. It was something to spend time together as a family. When uh, when we were kids, my sister was 8 and I was 10, and it was really my sister who wanted to do it. So, um, yeah, from there, it was just, you know, started winning in my first year and just kept taking it to the next level all the time. Um, raced Indy cars for seven years before I came to stock cars, so... Um, before I, uh, while I was still racing Indy cars, I, I got a little curious about NASCAR and I figured it probably was pretty fun. All these people out there, there's so many drivers every weekend, the fields are huge, and um, I had never raced a car until I had actually signed a contract to go race stock cars. So the good thing was, was um, my first race, uh, which was in the ARCA series at Daytona, was and probably one of my favorite memories of racing. It was just so much fun. And um, so here I am now in um, the Sprint Cup Series and uh, in uh, now starting my second full-time season in the Cup level. That's awesome. And, and I, I know there were so many fans that were very eager to see you cross over to NASCAR and see how you do in the stock cars as well. So you had a lot of support, I would imagine, already there for you. For sure. I've been very fortunate to have great support, great fans, um, whether it be sponsors like Peak or GoDaddy along the way that have been extremely supportive um, or, or the people involved um, or, or the fans to cheer me on. I'm, I'm very fortunate that I know that. Well, I'm sure, Patrick, you can appreciate that. You are just starting your career, and I'm going to brag a little bit about you because I know you're very humble, but you've taken a very different approach to this. You are actually a Harvard graduate, and you are in medical school right now, and you participated in the Peak Stock Car Dream Challenge, and it was a dream. You you won, and you're well on your way now. Would you like to talk a little bit about what inspired you to pursue racing cars when you also have this uh, you know great educational background as well? Yeah, I've had a little bit of a unique uh, kind of history to my racing compared to a lot of other drivers. Um, you know, I kind of grew up at the racetrack. I went to my first race when I was like six months old. Uh, my dad raced, you know, all the time when I was a kid growing up. So I just went to the track with him every weekend, and uh, I started in go-karts about when I was 13 years old, and kind of the agreement I made with my parents is if I wanted to race, um, I needed to get straight A's in school, and they'd have a car waiting for me. So um, that's kind of how things got rolling, and I won my first go-kart race, and from like third grade on, I was, I was getting straight A's, so both things just progressed over time, and I've been really fortunate you know, to have the opportunities I've had on the racing side and the school side. Um, Moved up from go karts to like pure stocks, pro trucks. I've uh, been racing super late miles the last several years, and then you know had the opportunity of a lifetime, like you said, with the Peak Stock Car Gene Challenge last year. Uh, I was able to win that, and you know now I'm racing in NASCAR. So it's in a short period of time, everything's uh, changed dramatically, and I'm you know I'm loving it. Danica, could you maybe tell us a little bit about what that was like for you to have an opportunity to be a judge and a coach and realize that you really were kind of, you know, making some young racers dream come true. That's that's quite an opportunity and a responsibility, I guess. It's funny how uh, the roles shift as you go on and, um, you know, the positive side is that, you know, I've 
I have the experience and um, I've accompl accomplished things. The other side is that it means I'm just getting old. And now <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm a veteran or not, but I suppose uh, I'm fortunate enough to be a veteran of um, of media. And so for the Peak Stock Car Dream Challenge, that was something that I came in to help out with. Um, there were various drivers and, and people within NASCAR that had, that had helped along the way to figure out um, to help the drivers and give them challenges and ultimately get to the point that Patrick won um, to prove that. But um, but I kind of helped out with the media side of things and teleprompter and um, how to present yourself. And so uh, that was a lot of fun. It was really cool. And I'll say everybody did such a good job. So um, they read prompter first time straight through under pressure. And I, I was like, sure, I would have made a mistake if that was me. So, um, so they did great. And Patrick, maybe you could explain to us a little bit of what that whole experience was. It's really a very unique opportunity in that anyone can enter it. And um, I know you submitted videos and there are various requirements for it, but ultimately it came down to what you proved to judges like Danica Patrick. So could you give us a little idea of what that experience must have been like for you? Yeah, I mean the whole thing that Peak put together uh, is just very different uh, from anything else we've you know seen in racing you know, the last several years about how a driver can get into the sport. I mean you have an interested sponsor and an interested team, and they were just kind of searching for that driver. So you know we had to submit a 90 second video online saying why Peak should sponsor us, and um, you know they picked their top nine that we took to Charlotte. Uh, competed for three days on everything from like a short track to a super speedway road course. Uh, we did a fake Peak commercial with Danica, which was really cool. Um, you know, we had a pit stop challenge, which is a lot of things that you know short track racers don't normally get to do. So, and in front of the right people too, um, it was just you know awesome experience from beginning to end. And you know the way it kind of springboarded my career uh, into NASCAR has been huge. I think everyone who's been a part of it um, got publicity from the show being on television, and it's helped benefit their careers. So, um, you know, it's it's doing you know a lot of great things for young racers, and they're doing it again this year. So. You know, thinking uh, along the lines of how you both are, Patrick, how you are coming up, and Danica, the things that you've uh, gone through to get to this point in your career, what what would you say have been, you know, the thing that inspired you to keep going through the challenges? Because both of you have had challenges in your career, and most of us have them along the way as well, but unique to, to uh, becoming a professional race car driver. What were some of them, and, and what would you say helped you get through? I mean, for me, it's... Uh you really just have to have confidence in yourself and some blind faith that it's going to work out. I, I, it's really as simple as that. I There were a lot of things that could have um, pushed me to the point of trying to look a different direction or losing the confidence that it was going to happen, but I really believed in myself. I believed in what I had to offer. Um, and I believed if I was given the opportunity that I could make the most of it and prove to people that, um, you know, I belonged in racing. And, and Patrick, I'm sorry. So it, was, um, it, was, it was all about confidence and faith. And it's all worked out pretty well. <laughs> some days. <laughs> and Patrick, I, I was just going to ask you, I know you've had, you know, some challenges and things along the way too. And again, going back to you're currently in medical school and balancing going to medical school with pursuing your dream of racing cars. Could you talk about what that must be like? I'm, I'm sure I can't even imagine the challenge of uh, excelling in both at the same time. Yeah, it's been tricky. I mean, I think the thing I'm most, most fortunate about is I've been doing it for a long time, so I've kind of learned how to manage uh, my time going back and forth between the two things. Um, just, you know, school has always been the priority because it's obviously something you can fall back on um, and, and have a great career with. And so I've taken school seriously, but I've always managed to, to get the racing in there. And, you know, I remember my senior year of college, you know, most people go on vacation for spring break, and I went home, worked on my race car for the whole week. Uh, we went to a race in Auburndale, Florida, and ended up winning it. So, uh, you know, racing's kind of given me a really unique uh, college experience now, even in med school. Um, you know, the first summer of med school is when I went to the Peak Stock Car Dream Challenge and won it. So, uh, you know, you kind of got to know how to balance things as best as you can and, you know, succeed at both. So. Have you gotten one piece of advice that someone gave you that kind of goes back in your head that makes you, you know, when times are tough or when you question whether you want to pursue this, what kind of advice did you get that really stayed with you? And in turn, do you have something for your peers, for young up-and-coming drivers? Um, I mean, the one thing, <laughs> as soon as you said that, that kind of rings in my head is when I was a kid, my dad always told me, don't be a wise guy. 
Um, I'm not sure how much that applies to racing, but you know, just b both my parents kind of the influence they've had um, on my life. I've learned everything about cars that I know from my dad. Um, so I work on all my own stuff when I'm home with my late model, and that's kind of allowed me to do good at that to get noticed in the, in the peak challenge. And you know, my mom's obviously my number one cheerleader. And when this whole competition came about, I actually saw the commercial for it on TV with her, and I said, you know, I'm going to enter that. And she said, there's that, you know, there's no reason why you can't win. And at the time, that kind of sounds crazy, but now sitting here looking back on it, it's it's kind of cool. It's all falling together. So. Yeah, that, that's. I guess that's my advice. Listen to your parents. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's good advice. And and Danica, I know your parents have always been a huge part of your career as well. I was just talking to them uh, during the rain delay during the Daytona 500. So I know they have. What was kind of what would you say would be a piece of advice that you kind of is your go-to thing if you need it? And and again, what would you possibly what would you tell up-and-coming drivers? Well, you know, Patrick brought up what his dad said, and I first thought of what my dad always told me, and that was to have fun. And uh, I um, now he says it to me before I go get in the car on for these cup races, and he gets all choked up. He didn't get all choked up when we were kids, and now it, since I'm easy to choke up, I'm like, Dad, you can't do this to me right before I get in the car. But um, but he still tells me that have fun, and um, uh, or in his voice, have fun. Like, oh yeah, yeah, just have fun under all this pressure. Uh, but it's true. It's the most important thing because I really think that if you having a good time, you're enjoying yourself, um, that I, I feel like I perform better. So, so having fun is really one of the more important things, I think. Awesome. I, I agree with you 100%. Probably you could say that in any profession, true, right? Have fun and enjoy it. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's look forward to the 2014 season, and, and Danica, you are in Las Vegas for uh, the NASCAR races this weekend there, and I'm wondering if that is at all a special place for you. Your fourth place there a couple of years back in the Nationwide Series was huge and is uh, still your your best performance uh, to date in a stock car in uh, your, your top five wise. Could you talk a little bit about 2014 and specifically this weekend? Well, it's... Um it's been a really great and really awful start to the year. I, I really feel like as a team, we're well, we're very prepared for this year. I have great new teammates with Kurt and Kevin, and having Tony back, um, and they're extremely helpful. Um, Daytona was, I feel like I had the the best car I had had, best best Hendrick engine all week in in the race, and felt like we were in a position to do really well and got caught up in an accident and uh, that ended that and then in Phoenix sort of running around 15th in practice and like top 10 lap times in the race and then to uh, have some people spin in front of me similar to the weekend before at Daytona and not have really anywhere to go and get hit. It's been a little bit of a rough start to the season as far as results go but on the other side of things I feel like especially starting with Phoenix as in stock cars, what we would call the real start to the season, um, the cars had a lot more speed. So there's a I feel like I feel like if we can improve that much from from Phoenix to where we were to where we are now, improve that much everywhere. Those tracks that I had good races and where I was um, more competitive, uh, I feel like are going to be really great events for me to um, to have a have a really great finish and you know you can't get wrapped up in results being the only thing you care about but at the end of the day it is very important and so um, just doing my best to not let the first couple of races get me down and uh, it's a long season if I let that happen I've done that before and it does not uh, end well and it um, it's uh, it's not good for the attitude or anybody around me so I'm just gonna put a smile on my face be happy that our cars are faster and hope that uh, it all goes right for me this weekend in Vegas I, I want to ask you, with the new rules and so much attention and focus on getting that win, putting you in the chase, has that changed your strategy at all? Some uh, some people might say, well, I, I'm going to focus on the tracks where I know I'm good because that's my best opportunity to go on and get the win versus spending a whole lot of time at tracks that are iffy. Has it changed your strategy and preparation for the season? No, I, I tell you what, uh, at this, I mean, Racing is hard at any level, but at this cup level, I've never seen so much effort be put into making cars go fast. It is not, it is not working hard. It is working relentlessly, and uh, I don't, 
So I'm not. So what I'm saying is, I don't think that you can really try any harder to be faster. Every team is always putting that kind of effort in to go faster. So, um, so for us, I, I think it's just keeping our head down, keep keep that relentless effort going to uh, to to be better every weekend and build better cars and improve the setups and for me to do a better job on the track. And I think that's all you can do. And you know, I think that there might be some interesting strategies that happen in the race at times where. Um, perhaps fuel comes into the picture because taking a gamble could result in something really, really great. Um, also, weather could play an issue and some some things happening this year. So I think that's where some of this stuff happens. But when you're out there on the track, I don't. I, I mean, I don't think I'm not thinking about make the chase with this win. I'm just thinking go forward, win the race. Oh yeah, whoa, you've made the chase now. Um, I feel like it's a it's something that happens as a result, but as a driver, you're always trying as hard as you can to to get to victory lane. Absolutely, and and Patrick, um, if you would like to talk about, obviously, you're going to get to make some KNN starts this year. If you want to just give us a preview of your season, and and uh, again, thanks to thanks to your success with the um, peak. Uh, stock car dream challenge this is really you know setting you off this is kind of the launching pad season for you so could you speak a little bit about your 2014 yeah I mean it's been an awesome 2014 you know even though it's just getting started uh, we ran New Smyrna and Daytona uh, the first two races during speed weeks and uh, that was a lot of fun we actually we got the hard charger move of the race award at New Smyrna because uh, we came from the back and passed a lot of cars uh, Daytona we started 18th, got up to 4th, got spun out, went all the way to the back, and then still drove all the way back up to 8th. So, I mean, I think if you look at it, we passed a ton of cars this year compared to everyone else. So we're definitely on track, putting on a really good show. I'm having fun in the cars. The crew's really gelling great together. And, um, you know, the next race we're going to is going to be Bristol, which is, you know, an iconic track in our sport. Uh, it's on March 15th. So we're getting the car ready for that right now, which is why I'm up in Charlotte um, in the shop, helping the guys get, get everything together. And, you know, from there we're going to Irwindale and Iowa and just, you know, these are tracks I never thought I'd even get to make it to, uh, just, just racing late models in Florida. So it's all been a dream come true. Um, when we pulled on to the track at Daytona, we had to make a left on the backstretch to get to the, the short track that we ran the Battle at the Beach. And so badly I wanted to just turn right and go on to the big track where the banking was. But, um, you know, it's just it's been such a great experience. And uh, everyone on board, whether it's the race team and everyone at Peak, wants to see me succeed. And they're looking to, you know, incorporate new partners into our program to help us continue racing uh, the second half of the season keep helping me climb the ladder. So, like you said, this is a, a springboard season, and we're doing everything we can right now to, to make a splash and turn some heads. Well, we all wish you the best of luck, Patrick. And uh, I'll tell you what, we have some questions coming in. This is from Chad Smith. Uh, he, this is from Google+. Plus. He wants to know, Danica, who was your biggest influence in racing? Um... Not probably my dad. I mean, I, I wasn't someone who grew up with idols or role models or people that I wanted to be like. I I always kind of had this internal feeling like I wanted to be I wanted to be me. I wanted to be the first me, not the next somebody else. And so um, so I I kind of just learned from the people that I I was around and worked with. But um, but of course, my dad helped me out the most. You know, he gave me the the work ethic, the drive, the 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 dedication. Um, he was always somebody that you know told me that if I wanted to quit today, I could. But if I wanted to do it, that he was going to help me do it right. And uh, so I always had the option. But I, of course, always said I wanted to do it. So he would uh, he would help. He's been known to be a little bit overbearing at times, but I I asked for it, and um, here I am today. Absolutely, and we have another question for you from Google Plus, and this is from Mark Summers. He wants to know what you do to mentally prepare for a race, Danica, and and taking that a step further, do you have a routine that you do on race morning? Do you like to be in your quiet place, or tell us a little bit about your preparation? Yes, my bus is a Zen bus. I have incense. <laughs> uh, you know, race day is a lot of times a fairly busy day. Um, there's a uh, meet and greets to do and drivers meeting and things like that so um, you know it stays pretty busy usually usually Ricky and I go to drive, do our do our meet and greets go to drivers meeting stay for chapel and then come back have something to eat and go to pit lane and go to go to driver introductions so it's a it's a fairly consistent routine um, and um, 
But but yeah, there's usually a fair amount to do. So it's not like you have the opportunity to just lay around all day and relax and stretch or do whatever you want. It's a uh, it's kind of go time. But um, but that's okay. I like it. I like staying busy and distracted because I I do get a lot more nervous on race day. I think people would be surprised to know what you drivers do on the morning before you get in the car. I mean, there's very few sports that the athletes are running around doing, doing all the things uh, that you're asked to do on the morning before. So I think people would be very surprised at how busy you are. And not, and not only that, but then, you know, racing is such a great sport that we allow so much access to our fans and everybody and our sponsors and people involved in the sport. Um, you know, when we're down on the grid with our cars before the race, it's a cluster. There are so many people around and, and people are allowed to get very close to you and so you know so you're taking photos of sponsors at the car, um, you're, you're, you're chatting with people there, you're saying hello, you might sign an autograph or two but you know that's all minutes before you get in the car so that's what you know racing is a very different sport in that way where we're, we're there to make our fans and make our sponsors feel welcome and help, help everyone have a good time and you know, probably pretty interesting athletes and the ability to switch on and off like we do to chat with the sponsor, get in the car, and go 200. Um, so uh, it's um, it's it's a, it's almost more relaxing to just get in the car. I bet there's not many people getting their photographs with the Super Bowl quarterbacks 10 minutes before they they run out on the field. So I'd like to though. That'd be fun. <laughs> Patrick, do you have a special way that you prepare for races? A Zen um, motorhome or anything? <laughs> no, no motorhomes at, at the races I'm going to uh, quite yet. But, you know, just a lot of what we do is kind of one-day shows. So, you know, while, like with Annika was mentioning before the races, it's kind of a circus going on on pit road. Uh, all of our stuff, you're practicing right up till qualifying. You hurry up and qualify. They impound the cars, and you got to be ready to go right after that. So there's not really a whole lot of time for a specific routine. It seems like every time we go to a track, you're dealing with a different set of uh, variables that you got to take, you know, control of before the race starts. So mostly just making sure the car is in, in order and then, you know, getting in, in that right place in your head to go out there and compete. Kind of along these same lines, Danica, we have a, uh, a question from somebody that wants to know, how true to life do you find NASCAR to be to the movie Talladega Nights? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of similarities actually. <laughs> that was like a biography, right? <laughs> and in fact, I, I was thinking after uh, at the end of the 500 this year that somebody or somebody should be walking across the start finish line to finish the race um, with that big accident. But um, but uh, it's I mean sponsors are real. Maybe you don't say them during the prayer before dinner. Um, maybe you're not sort of sipping. Um, espresso in the car, uh, but, you know, we do have drivers from other countries, um, and uh, there are pretty ladies in racing, there are lots of pretty ladies that are married to drivers, and, um, but that's about it. Unfortunately, we don't get to go home at the, they sort of portray it like you get to hang out at your house and whatnot before race day, and, you know, you're living on the bus, throwing out that steakhouse for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> we have a Twitter question for you along those lines as well. Um, this is from Mark Taylor. He wants to do, know what are some of your favorite things to do while you're traveling from race to race? Um, well, Ricky plays golf, which means I play golf. <laughs> so we play a lot more golf now. And actually, that's really fun. Actually, it's um, it's a good way to get out and see the area and relax. And um, so we, we we tend to do that now. Uh, the last race in Phoenix was great for that. I almost had a hole in one. How amazing is that? It was like it was like under a foot. It was amazing. I took a picture. That, that is amazing. Yeah, you take a picture. And so he said that he's never been that close to a hole in one. So already I'm ahead of the game and I've only been playing for about a year, a little over a year. So so that's going pretty good. Um, other than that, I mean, it's really, you do you have sponsor obligations, but there's a lot of on track and there's a lot that goes into that. Um, you know, uh, you know, Patrick will continue to learn how involved that it gets every level that you step up 
and uh, how much more busy you get. And um, you know, I'm very fortunate to have great sponsors and great people with me. But um, but yeah, you, you work a lot at the track, and and that, but that, at the end of the day, that's what you're there for. Um, but every now and again, we play golf. So um, that's kind of about it. I'm going to go shopping today. There you go. <laughs> How's the weather in Las Vegas right now? It's sunny. It's nice. Oh, it's not the west. I feel bad for my hometown friends. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, you've had the your story has actually inspired people quite a bit to uh, to try to go after their dream, whatever it may be. And you have a question from Twitter from John McCormick, and and he asks quite seriously. Um, he's thinking about entering the. Uh, Peak Stock Car Dream Challenge, and he's 49 years old. What do you think? I think absolutely, man. You got to go for it. You know, you never know until you try, and that's kind of the approach I took last year when I entered. And you know, I, th I think if you go on that, you're 49 years young. So there's there's no reason why you can't do it. Um, the way they formatted the competition this year is really cool. You can you can enter the video online like you did last year. Um, you could fight for social media points. I think they're taking like the top five people from that, or you can hop on iRacing and try to win you know, the Peak Stock Car Dream uh, Championship on there, and then you'll automatically get a spot uh, in, in the Dream Challenge this year. So there's lots of different ways to, to enter. They're taking 18 total people, and, and they're going to bring them all to, you know, to the competition. So, you know, I don't think it matters what your age is. As long as you're passionate about this sport, and you can come through your video and show that to everybody. They're going to look at your video. They're going to look at your resume. They're going to look at how bad you want this, and, and they'll give you a shot if, you know, if you really stand out. So go for it. Speaking of age, Danica? You have a birthday coming up a little bit later. <laughs> Surprise. A couple weeks from now in March. What, uh, any plans, any big wish list for that? Actually, I'm going to be on a girls' trip. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. So um, it's, uh, it's going uh, to be a fun week, but um, we'll, we'll end, in, end up end in Fontana, and I'll drive my little girls' trip in California. Um, and turn uh, 22. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm turning 32. So no, speaking of, so people know, because you were talking about this Peak Stock Car Dream Challenge, it's until April 30th, people can send in their videos. Yeah. You know, get it done. Well, listen, we are going to conclude things up today. I want to thank both of you for taking the time, and, and I'm sure that people watching found all sorts of great tips and insight from both of you um, and and Patrick congratulations and good luck to you this season doing it this is uh, about all the time that we have today and again I want to thank you Danica and thank you Patrick and uh, don't forget as you mentioned the videos can come in through April 18th so uh, if oh, you're interested right. in what was that? My bad I thought it was April 30th <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> <laughs> I'll just change the rules. <laughs> we'll have all of the information online that will make it easy. We'll tweet it all out for you about the Peak Stock Car Dream Challenge. And you definitely, uh, definitely watch. And we hope that we'll have another fantastic winner like Patrick. And uh, thank you both again. Have a great weekend. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to say it, but congrats, Patrick. It was really cool. You got any advice for me for round two? I, I can't wait to judge and help out. And you, anything I need to do better? Well, from what I've been told this year, they're going to kind of have me there to kind of help out with some of the modules, too. So maybe we'll work together on one of them. Oh, that's it. Sorry. Right? You got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. well, oh, one more thing. I know Danica like just broke a million followers on Twitter, and so I got ways to go to catch up with her. But go give me a follow at 97 Patrick Star, and you can keep up with all of our racing going on this year in Bristol and everything like that. And uh, just a big thank you to, to Brian Emmerich and everybody at Peak for putting together the Stock Car Dream Challenge. And, like I said, go out there, put a video in, and see if you can make it to Charlotte this year. Thank you for everyone for watching today. Thank you. See you guys. Thank you.